Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila back there running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today, I've been waiting for this recipe. Man, you want a barbecue and you don't have any hamburger buns. Yeah, you can go in the kitchen and get some bread and slap a burger between two pieces of bread, but it's just not the same as a nice, big, soft hamburger bun. So we're going to make some homemade ones right now. Come on over, let's get started. First thing we're going to need is three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And in this bowl, we're just going to put a little bit of this in here. Maybe, oh, half a cup or three quarters of a cup or so. And the rest, we're going to dump in our mixer. And also, in our mixer with that flour, we're going to put in one teaspoon of salt. Now that'll be doing its thing over there in just a second. But first of all, we want to add some other ingredients to this. We want to put in one egg, beaten. And we want to put in a quarter of a cup of sugar in there. Of course, we want to put in our one packet of active yeast. And then we want to put in a little bit of warm water, like one cup even of warm water. A little at a time here. put about half of that in then we'll put the rest in when we're going to add it to our dough. So about a half a cup, we're going to stir that up in there. Make sure it's not hot, hot water because it'll kill your yeast. They say about 105 degrees, so, but just nice and warm, about like bathtub water is about perfect. Now we're going to let this set for just about five minutes to see if it starts foaming up and then we'll be right back. You know, I forgot to add a half a stick of butter melted then brought back to room temperature. It was hiding over here behind one of my other containers. So let me get that in there as well. I mean I could have put it in the flour when we're mixing that but I just soon put it in here. There we go. That looks a lot better. I knew there was something missing. Now we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, we got a bunch of little bubbles down in there going, so our yeast is working. I'm going to mix this salt and flour just on stir, and it has the bread hook in there. And I already kind of pre-mixed it a little bit to make sure it didn't miss out on the sides. And then I'm going to add our mixture here a little at a time. Let it kind of incorporate into that rascal. Now remember I kept half a cup of water off to the side because that's going to be my final judgment. There we go. Now it's starting to gather up the sides of it. Sheila, I'm going to move this up there and have you bring the camera up a little closer so we can see what's happening down in here. Can you see a little better there, Sheila? Alright, let me pour the rest of our mixture in there. And then, keep drizzling in our little warm water. A little at a time, let it gather. There we go. Now see, I always use a cup, but I never use all of it because I like to let it go until it kind of gets a sticky ball and mixes that in there. We're going to let this mix for just a little bit. And what I do, and this is just me, everybody's different. What I do is I let it, I put a little extra water in, let it go past what would be a dough ball. And then I take a little pinch of flour at a time and just put in a little pinch of flour. And watch how it just gathers right up and starts pulling everything off the sides. See that? That's just one little teeny pinch of flour after I put what you would think maybe is a too much water. But that's the way I like to do it. I like to bring it back to exactly what I want. Oh, it's getting better. Perfect, perfect. I'm just putting in little teeny pinches of flour until it gets right exactly how I want. Really close there. 
See, and that's not even a quarter of a cup. That's just little pinches. Oh, beautiful. Let me let that run for a second. Now see how it just wipes everything off the sides real nice? I really like that. I'm going to give it one more little dab, not much. One more little dab. Now I'm going to let this knead for about three minutes is all. We'll be right back. It's been about three minutes. I've got a bowl here with a little bit of oil in it, and I'm going to put a little of that oil on my fingers so I can take this off this dough hook here. Oh, that dough feels good. That is exactly what we're looking for. Because I got a little oil on my fingers, even though it's tacky, it's like my fingers want to stick to it, but not quite. Beautiful. Now that just feels so soft and so nice. Now I'm going to put this in my bowl here that's oiled up. And here's the funny thing about this recipe. It's only going to rest in here for about 15 to 30 minutes. Not the regular two hours that you do on a lot of bread recipes to double the size and all that stuff. So we'll see you in about 20 minutes. Alright, it's only been 20 minutes. And this is puffed up real nice here. Yeah, just a little bit of flour on top of here. We want to kind of shape this almost like a racetrack kind of looking shape like so. Like this here. And then the object is to cut it in half. Then we want to cut the dough in half again. each one of these. Then we want to cut the halves in half. And what the idea is, is we want eight of these rascals out of here. Now you can cut them smaller if you want and make slider hamburger buns. And what we're going to do here is kind of shape this a little bit. Let me get a little flour on my hands here kind of shape it out like this. I'm going to put three down each side, evenly spaced, in the shape of our burger buns. Then, we're going to put once we got the four corners and the split the difference ones, I like to do it like that, is I put one right there in the middle of each little four so they'll cook together. They should be about an inch apart or so and hopefully they'll kind of touch when they cook. Alright, does that look a little better in frame, Sheila? Alright, she's my little director over there. I can see her waving her hands if, if I'm not quite doing the right thing. And then get your little shape for your buns, whichever ones look just the way they need to look. Them look pretty nice. Now we're going to let these sit for another 15 minutes and kind of puff up a little bit. We'll be right back with you. Man, these look just absolutely terrific. You know what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to let the dough rise for an hour before I cut it into eight pieces. Even though they puffed up nice, I thought I could get away with about 30 minutes and they were kind of flat. But after letting them sit in the oven for about an hour, shaped into these little hamburger patties, they puffed up really nice. So I'd go an hour the first time, an hour the second time, and you're going to get the nice rise. Come on over here, let me show you what we're going to do now. Well, these just puffed up fantastic. And only this one is perfectly round. The other ones are kind of a little bit out of shape, but that's just the way I rolled them out. But I know if you really take your time, and I know there's some gals out there that can make them nice and flat and round perfect. And these little hamburger buns are my little custom buns. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little egg wash on here. I took a little egg and a little milk, and I'm very, very lightly, because I don't want these to fall, I'm very lightly brushing this 
on top of these and I preheated the oven to 350 degrees and we're just going to cook them until they're nice and golden brown. And we've got a little egg. I just took one egg and whipped it up in a bowl and poured in about a quarter of a, well I'd say about an eighth of a cup of milk. Just a little splash of milk in there. But when you brush this on, be very careful not to push down on these because we want them to go up, not down. But they're looking really good. I am excited to see what the finished product's going to be like. And then we're going to do another show where we're going to do a special hamburger and we're going to use these buns to put them in. So be watching for that. I'll probably put that recipe at the end of this video and this recipe at the end of the hamburger video. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Well, all right. We got a nice little egg wash on these. Very gentle. Now for the magic touch. You can't have hamburger buns without sesame seeds. What is it? Two all beef patties, special Ross, and <laughs> that's a joke. Special sauce and pickles and lettuce on a sesame seed bun. If you're going to have a hamburger bun, you got to have these. So I picked up a little jar of sesame seeds at the store, knowing I was going to do this recipe. And I'm going to sprinkle these on here just enough to where I would like them. And then we're going to pop them in the oven at 350 degrees. And we're going to show you some nice homemade hamburger buns in case you're out of hamburger buns when you're ready to and you don't want to run to the store all right there we are you can whip them up as long as you got a little flour and salt and stuff at the house you can always make them so let's pop them in the oven 350 and we'll see you in just a little bit well all right let me explain these Buns. I got great big hamburger buns. If I'd have made a little smaller, they'd have been a little taller. If I'd have let the dough rise for an hour first, then let them rise after I made them into hamburgers, they would have been a little higher. But I love the fact that they're nice, great big hamburger buns. But I got a problem because I didn't know that when you deep fried hamburgers, you better start that big if you want that big. So let me give you some information. When they're down there making their hamburgers, down at Dyer's, they put mustard on here, and they put onions on it. Now, are you ready for this? And they say, if you want lettuce or tomato, go next door. They make salads over there. They don't have no lettuce and no tomato in their restaurant. Can you believe that? Mustard and onions only. Now I got thinking, what if we put one in the middle, but what if we put two of them? I think we better stay with one in the middle here. So we're going to make, because we have a nice big flat bun, we can do one of their double doubles as they call them. And I'm going to give that a mash. Perfect. Same thing with this one here. You need a good hearty bun to hold up to this grease stuff. But there you have it. <laughs> Let me blow that off to make sure it looks good on camera. Because it's got to look good when we put it on YouTube. What do you think, Sheila? Looks great. There. What, you missing something? Alright, she's cleaning it up. She's my little director. So, there we go. Deep fried double decker hamburgers. This way, this way. Right, right there. Right there. Does that look good? Yeah, that's good. All right, there you have it. And no tomatoes and no lettuce. Double decker hamburgers on homemade buns that we made ourselves. And we're going to modify that recipe. And believe it or not, this is ending up at the end of our hamburger YouTube video. And it's also ending up at the end of our hamburger bun. YouTube video. So again, for those that I told to do it like 25 or 30 minutes, let the dough rise originally that we made in the mixer for an hour. Then when you shape them into the burgers, I made them real big and flat and I like these because I want to make a nice big hamburger in the future, but I'll rise it for an hour, then let it set shaped and rise another hour, then bake it at 350 degrees until they're golden brown with the sesames. And I think we got us something here. 
Don't have to buy the 80-20 no more when it comes to hamburger. Get the 73% lean, 27% fat. So when you cook them flat little thin burgers and make them as thin and as big as you can make them because when you dunk them in here they zing right up and fit perfect. These were a little smaller so I went double decker. Next time I'm making them bigger and I'm going to go single level. But I couldn't be happier with the burgers. I couldn't be happier with the buns. We're looking forward to a great dinner and if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, Little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up right over here in just a little bit. We're going to put another recipe over here. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put the hamburger bun recipe over here and on the hamburger recipe video, I'm going to put the hamburger recipe in. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Sheila, is this the best hamburgers you ever seen deep fried? If they ain't, they ought to be. Great job on the camera. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Hope you subscribe to our channel. Time to dive in. No lettuce and no tomatoes.